once again with COVID, everything has changed and we are on a socially distanced walk. In the mud. That's how we get to see each other now. <laughs> so we thought we'd do a catch up of where we're at with the van bills. Um, and what the plans are going forward because they have kind of changed a little bit from where we originally planned. First off we had Christmas and then we had a Christmas break because Christmas break and then we decided we'd take a week off the van build to work on our website which is now launched by the way www.laurenmears.com check it out. Yeah so we we're gonna take a week and then in the middle of that week lockdown 3.0 was announced. The new situation is that Amir is working on the van and I took over the main organisation of the website, Amir's helped with it, but I was on it like pretty much full time. It was freezing at the start of the lockdown, so Amir wasn't doing four weeks like we were before Christmas. So we're jumping back in on week four technically of the van build, um, so that's we're going to pick it back up again and then go from there. A quick thing about the website I mentioned before, we launched it on the 26th of January and we kind of love it, we're really proud of it. Basically when you go on the website there's a section called Van Build Hub and if you click on that it will then take you to a list of, I think it's three different options, so you've got the Van Build Guides, you've got our products that we used in Willow and then a link to YouTube as well um, so you can watch these videos. But yeah, so we've detailed everything we used in Willow, um, all the products, all of the building like materials, all of the wood. Uh, consumable stuff so if you want to see exactly what we used um, yeah you can find it all there. It's home to the van build guides to walk you from the very first step of buying your van, deciding which van to get and it's going to be all the way through to the very end. And I always say about a van build it's kind of like a microcosm of everything DIY. You get a little bit of plumbing, you get a little bit of electrics, you get a little bit of building, you get a bit of insulating, you get the whole shebang and you, you have to learn it all so if you don't know anything when you start out it's like overwhelming and you end up spending ages researching and finding the right products and it's a nightmare. Basically letting people like us trial and error <laughs> and, then, and then you can take the shortcut I guess. So we started this van build, um, I think we've had about oh, three weeks, about 15 days of work on it now, um, which is not a huge amount of time that we've actually spent on the van, but we feel like we're making a lot of progress. We stripped the van out, um, cleaned it all up, gave it a good scrub out. We took the front flooring, which is yep, down there, took that out um, and washed that. We then sand ended the walls. We then insulated, you can see the super quilt, like all of this sort of puffy stuff. So we put the frames in, we covered up the wheel arch covers, so you can see the wheel arch covers over one there and one there. Box them out with plywood um, and then we worked on the floor. So with the floor, basically what we did was um, put beams down, had to cut a channel through to run one of the cables under the floor. Uh, in between the battens we then put 25mm Kingspan, essentially Celotex, um, that hard foam insulation board, and then put 12mm ply um, on the top all scribed in so that it completes completes the subfloor. Um, yeah so today was actually quite a bit well it was a bit of a slow day for me um, it's a lot of prep work I sort of left the van in an absolute state so spent a bit of time hoovering it out um, blowing out all the sawdust um, yeah I've just resprayed the cubby holes so they're drying in the garage at the moment so hopefully they'll be dry in a couple hours and I can give them another sand another spray paint and they'll be ready to install um, yeah cool Brilliant. That's how quick it is literally to spray all of the cubby holes, which when we did it in Willow, um, we actually painted them once they were in and behind some of the tongue and grooves. We had to get the paintbrush in like all the little areas and it took like four or five coats. Whereas here, it's been like two coats of top, of, um, two coats of primer and two coats of top coat. No, three coats of top coat, yeah. 
it's super quick. It takes like a couple minutes to um, to spray it the whole way through. And then, yeah, just wait for it to dry. I leave it in front of the heater, I think. Um, just helps speed up the drying a little bit. And then I'll fit them hopefully later on today once they're all dried. Okay, another day, another day on the van build. So I had a bit of a slow start this morning, was working in the garage a little bit, just getting some little bits prepped to fit into the van today. And then I spent the whole of, well, the last few days really, um, I say days, like it's sort of chopping and changing at the moment, um, sorting out cubby holes. So now we have cubby holes like that. And then inside them, they have little black charge points as well. Got two fast charge USB Bs on one side and on the other side we have a USB 3.0 and a USB-C charger. So plan today is then just to fit the cubby holes and try and finish the upper cab finally. Um, I barely did any work yesterday just because it was minus two all day um, and I was not prepared to work in minus two because I don't know, probably a little bit soft now. Okay, let's go. So these are going to fit in all of these spaces. Okay, so that's two in. Um, just hooked up the power to the USB uh, socket. So I've got a, a small um, 12 volt power supply. So that's just plugged into the mains uh, and puts 12 volts to this cable, which is connected just with the clips. And you can see we've got power. Great. Three cubby holes down on this side, three to go on this side. took a bit longer than I thought but there we go all done so we've got six cubby holes uh, so the tongue and groove actually laps right the way up and covers all of that sort of come right up to there and then get sanded and filled in and then some across there like that and then possibly some there so you can really sort of you know dump stuff in there um, yeah we are now finally getting to the exciting part of the build one of the exciting parts electrics everything's delivered everything's ready to go i'm um, just waiting on the batteries which are currently stuck in poland um thank you covid thank you brexit anywho um so once they come i can obviously get it all plugged together but for now i'm just going to sort of lay everything out figure out where exactly i want it how i want it all placed so i thought i'd give um give a quick rundown of the electrical system we're going to put in the van um very similar to willow's electrical system um a few little upgrades a few a few changes here and there um, so we're gonna have two batteries. We have two 100 amp power lithium batteries um, that are gonna be Bluetooth enabled. And they'll have a smart shunt um, from Victron just for monitoring um, all off the phone, off the app, which is kind of cool. Um, so that power will then go into the Lynx power ring, which we're gonna use as a distributor. Um, so that power will go into here through the shunt, things like that, into there. And then this will then push the power out to wherever it needs to go. Um, so yeah, so we'll have some power going to the inverter so that'll plug into the inverter, then the inverter will go to the consumer unit and the consumer unit will go through the Arctic Blue cable all the way through to the other side of the van um, for the 240 volt socket. So that's your household plug sockets. Um, we'll then have power coming from here to this fuse box, um, which will do everything such as lights and cameras for that side of the van. And then we've got another cable, I think it's this cable here, going over to the other side of the van um, for another fuse box because we have quite a few 12 volt appliances. We've got the smart um, charge controller from Victron as well. So that's for the solar panels, which are this way here. So they're up on the roof. They'll come down into here. That will monitor all of that sort of stuff. Pop it into there. And then that will go back to the batteries as well. Um, and then lastly, we're going to have another one of these on the backside around here, 
which is going to be just for the shore power hookup. Um, so we're still debating whether to put it in on the inside or the outside of the van. I'm not a fan of the outside. I think it just looks a little bit, unless you can like conceal it, it doesn't really look too, too great. In my opinion, anyway. The idea is then that when you plug into shore power, you want to have a plug socket that you can just use. Um, and that'll be in the battery bay somewhere. And then we'll also have a charger as well. So you can plug in, charge your batteries up. Um, solar will charge as well. And then the other appliance, which we haven't got here, which is going to go at the front of the van, is the DC to DC charger. Um, so that's from Renergy as well. Same as the inverter, which is upside down. Same as the inverter. Um, and that's a 20 amp charger. So whenever we drive, it will charge, the solar will charge. And then hopefully, where is it? Whenever we plug in, it will charge as well. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's the basic sort of premise of our electrical system. We've got some pretty cool bits, I think. We've got an electrical mechanical ball valve on the gray water tank. So you'll flick a switch and it will just open the valve. So you don't have to get out and sort of unscrew um, a tap or anything like that. So you can just drive over the drain that you're draining into, um, flick the switch and then drain that sort of stuff. Um, what other electrical bits have we got? Plenty of 12 volt charging. What other 12 volt stuff we've got? We've got um, cigarette lighters on this side, which can charge laptop batteries. We've got um, USB-C, USB-B or fast charge USB over there. Um, we'll have water level gauges at the front as well. There'll be LED strip lights under all the upper cabinets and then LED puck lights on the roof. Um, got the max van as well. So yeah, plenty of stuff, plenty of kit in this van. Um, and we're also putting in a wire in case you ever want to put a nature's head toilet into it into this setup because um, that's going to live just over here.